Welcome back to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame. My name is Ed Holinsky. Glad you could join me today. I have another great guest here today, another North Tonawanda legend. Back from the 1951 season, yes, 70 years ago, the one and only Matt Bursick. Matt, how are you doing these days, sir? How am I? I am fine. I want to talk to you about your, your high school football career, the 1951 season, the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks. What do you remember about that season? Uh, well, as you know, or maybe you don't know, but during that time, uh, our biggest rival was Kenmore West. Not Kenmore East or West, it was just plain Kenmore West. And there was not enough room in veterans' better, uh, better field back at the old high school to hold these games and, 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 and uh, and have the people, uh, you know, be satisfied. So they arranged to play at Civic Stadium, which ended up being the Rock Pile in 1951. But actually, they played there for three years. I I don't know if I was the last year or if I was the second year or the first year, but I played there. And my biggest memory there was when I walked into the visitors' locker room. Apparently, the Buffalo Bills played Cleveland um, Browns the week, the, the previous Saturday. And they still they left the men's names on their, on their lockers. On my locker was Marion Motley, and he was the, uh, he was the fullback for Cleveland Browns. I don't know if you, you remember that name? A legend in, in, in the National Football League. Well, he was an All-American football player. And that was, that was a big thrill for me. Uh, and then just walking out on that field, it, uh, you know, I thought of things like, well, maybe I'll do this in college or something, but that never happened because I wanted to go in the Navy. And I went, left, left the high school and went to the Navy in 1952. What do you recall about playing for coach George Vetter? What do I recall about him? Well, he didn't like to be called major. A lot of guys used to get kind of funny with them, and they'd call him, okay, Major, and then he'd just give them a look. And when you got, when you got that look from him, you knew it was meant, that he meant business. And then there was Mr. McGlisskill, who was his assistant, uh, him and Doc Rogel. And uh, they uh, pretty much did whatever veteran wanted, what veteran wanted them to do. And then there was Mr. Pluak, John Pluak. He was my junior varsity coach. And he turned around and uh, helped out with the varsity also. That year, you came in with a 30-some-odd game-winning streak, 1951. And then you ran up against Lackawanna, and you, yeah. lost six, you lost six to nothing, and that broke a 32-game winning streak. I want to ask yeah. you a couple questions about that. First, yeah. how much pressure was it on you guys to keep that winning streak going? How much pressure did you get for the winning streak? Uh, well, we wanted to win that win, that game badly. It was a night game in Lackawanna Stadium. And I can remember we were down by six points or so, right, or whatever, a touchdown. And we kept feeding the ball to Fritz Barilla, who was our fullback, and kept giving them, and he kept plunging the line and moving along and moving along. Uh, so we got us about the 50 yard line. And then it was third and say seven or eight. So I went into the game and we had a call play called a play called the C50. And which meant that I was the right hand or left end, right end, and I'd go cut across toward the linebacker, take him out of position, and then do an about face and go out to the right. And we played from a single wing, so uh, our halfback come along. As I went to the right, he came along with me. And he threw the ball, and we made a first down. We, got, we went for 25 yards, 20 or 25 yards, something like that. But then it was a stall again. And I'm not really sure. I'm not sure whether we fumbled the ball or whatever it was. But we ended up losing that, that game, and it wasn't too much that uh, – there wasn't much happiness on the team 
nor veterans. And but he congratulated us, and uh, you know he was always a very, very much of a gentleman. What went? What were the thoughts of the team uh, losing that game six to nothing to Lackawanna? I, I right now I can't really remember what what my thoughts were about the game, but I know that we were expected to win, but unfortunately we did not. Back then, was the uh, Tonawanda North Tonawanda rivalry uh, yeah. a big deal? Oh yeah, it was just as big as it is now. It's you know I. I I think that even in this case now, they'd give up a game just to beat North, beat Tonawanda. But uh, Tonawanda had a halfway decent team, but they didn't. They lost us. I don't remember what the score was, but I know uh, I know it was muddy and rainy, and it was a terrible day to play football. You were a right end for North Tonawanda. That was your position. You were the right a right end. You were a wide receiver. Yeah, I was the right end. How often did, did they pass the ball to you? The single wing was more of a running formation than anything else. And uh, we didn't throw the ball as much as I'd like them to. <laughs> uh, and, and all the, the other ends also. And uh, the, uh, when we did, it was a big surprise. So I, and it worked out well when we did throw. And I don't know why we didn't throw more. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't, and uh, I, I, we, we lost another game that year, too. We lost to LaSalle. That was after Lackawanna, I think. It was a day game behold, behind the old Trot face of Cross High School, LaSalle. And uh, I'm getting away from your, your question, I guess. No, that's okay. Continue. That's okay. You put you lost against LaSalle. What do you recall in that about that game? About LaSalle? Yes. They were they had a they had a hard hitting team. In fact, I ended up playing baseball against about a half of those guys. Uh, after I come out of the service, I played softball and uh, half of those guys, Iotis and Pete Garvey and Leo Garvey and uh, Dick Steibach, they all played for that team, and I ended up playing with them uh, on a softball team. We were called the, the, the Niagara Falls. Uh, something. Huh? Something. Yeah, the Niagara Falls team. From, we played under the lights. We won three state championships with that team. I want to get back to your high school football. Who were some of the, the, your teammates? Uh, Roger Urbano and I were very good friends. Uh, Roger Urbano, I don't know if you know it or not, but within the last two, three months, he just passed away. And he was the left end on our what's called. Heck of a blocker. Uh, nice guy. He said it like it was. Uh, he, he meant business when he went out to play. And uh, the other end was... Uh, the, the other relieving end was Jim Took. And Jim Took, Jim Took was, uh, he was a, he was a very nice guy, <laughs> but he was, uh, you know, a little bit of a smart aleck guy. You got to ask him a question, you got a dumb answer, you know. And, but uh, he, he was a good football player. And Dave Harrington was the other one on the other end that relieved the Urbano when we went on. Uh, defense because he was uh, he went he, he was about 180 pound and and he could block he could he could tackle he was very good on defense so when we went on defense he went on defense. What was and, the equipment like uh, back in back in 1951? Well, pretty much what they what they were now except that we had pads and our I, I noticed most of the guys don't have, even have pads in their pants anymore. But we had them. We had knee pads. We had the, the shin, uh, side pads uh, along the just below the waist, and then we had a waist waistband uh, that we that, that that we wore. And uh, I think that the helmets were probably a lot heavier than they are now. Uh, they were they were more not. They were leather, not crap, not plastic, you know. 
like they are now. Uh, I wore the number 16, I believe, in high school, in baseball and basketball and and in football. And I, uh, uh, as far as the uniforms were, we were well equipped for, for to, to play ball in that time. What would you tell people about that playing in that era of North Tonawanda football? Uh, well, like I say, they played out of a single wing. I would have rather been throwing the ball a little bit more, being an end. In fact, when I was in the junior varsity, I played left halfback. And when I came back, came up to, to the varsity, Mr. Fetter said to me, he said, you were kicking us for points on a JVs. And I said, yes, I was. And he said, well, he said, we like to, we like to protect our kickers, you know. And I said, well, I want to play, I want to play on the field, you know. If it means that I got to give up playing just to be a kicker, I said, I, I, I'm not really for that. He didn't like my answer too much, I guess. So he switched me from halfback where I would more normally get hurt. And he made an end out of me. And I played right end. How were you as a place kicker? You kicked extra points. Did, uh, did Coach Vetter want you to go for two points, or did he want you to kick extra points? We, uh, we, I don't think we ever went for two. I don't even know if the two points rule was a rule then. I'm not really sure because we never, we never used it. We always get our extra points. And uh, he, uh, he elected to take another boy by the name of Smitty to be my holder in kicking. And uh, he and I were the team. So when we went to kick off, not, I didn't kick off. Uh, we had another kid that could kick the ball further than I could by the name of Ron Kubiak. And he was from Martinsville. My son, or my son-in-law knows him very well. But anyway, uh, he made a team of us and we, we did pretty well. Our percentages were pretty good as far as uh, making the kicks. I don't know. I can't remember how many I kicked, but I could kick quite a few of them. Never tried a field goal. All all the time I played. Why was that? Why did why didn't uh, better go try for a field goal? He well, we practiced field goals, you know, but uh, he he never he never put me in to kick a field goal, and. Uh, the guy before me kicked for two years, and uh, he I took his place. And I think in the two years that he played, he only tried one field goal, and that's when North Tonawana was beating Trot by 51 and nothing or something like that. And not to shame them, they went in and kicked the field goal instead of going for a touchdown. That's the only time I ever remember North Tonawana kicking a field goal. Did it matter back then when you played that you were playing you were a big school playing against little schools? Uh, everybody wanted to beat North Tonawanda. You know, they went out there. When they went out there, they'd come in your face in the line and they'd talk dirt to you and stuff like that. But uh, they, uh, yeah, there were some weak teams there. Trot Vocational was one of them. You might consider Tonawanda at that time was kind of a weak team too. And uh, I'm trying to think of who else. LaSalle was a strong team. Lackawanna was a strong team. We were. Kenmore was very good. Lockport was a weak team. We always did pretty well against Lockport, too. I'd say there was, I, 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 I would only say there was about probably three weaker teams, on, you know, weak teams in that Niagara Frontier League at that time. I see that you have your, your 1951 letter sweater over your right shoulder. What, is that, what does that sweater mean to you? What does that sweater mean to me? Well, I was going with a girl and it meant like I could give it to my girlfriend and she could wear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, all, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, it meant a, a lot to me. It was the sweater that uh, I thought, I don't, I, as, as as much as I played and stuff, I I didn't deserve it as, as much as a lot of the other guys on the team. Uh, you, I had we had guys on, on our team that, for instance, I mentioned Ron Kubiak. 
he ended up getting a full scholarship to Iowa University. Roger Urbano went to Tennessee, and he ended up being an assistant coach there. Uh, he just passed away a few months ago. Fritz Verita ended up going to UB, uh, but he uh, he just passed away. I might I'd say about a year or two ago. I think I'm, I'm, I'm I got to be pretty close to the top where as far as people still living. You know? uh, most 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 of the guys I played ball with were great 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 guys. We ne I never had a fight on our team. We had comedians. Uh, we had guys that were very serious. Some of them took the games more serious than others, but everybody wanted to win. Go North Carolina. I've asked you several things right now. What would you like to talk about that I haven't asked you? I also played baseball. I played shortstop and third base for North for Vetter. Vetter was also our coach in that, uh, at that time. And McGlisco was our coach from, uh, uh, he was our uh, track coach. And he came over one Saturday and he, while we were practicing, he said to Mr. Vetter, he said, who are the four, four fastest guys you have on a team? He said, why? He said, well, because we're going into the sectionals on Saturday and we're going to Lackawanna Stadium. Uh, there's going to be six, six competitive teams in, out there. And he says, we need, I need some men with some speed. And you're not playing on Saturday, you're playing Friday night. And I need somebody for Saturday. So who are your fastest guys? So he mentioned Carlo Marletti, Bob Stoltenberg, Gary Meisenberg, and myself. Well, I was the leadoff man. I handed the relay stick to Gary Meisenberg, he gave it to Bob Belstead, and Carl Maletti ran like a dog. He ran like a deer. We ended up winning it. <laughs> a pickup team, we just, he, he put four uniforms on the table to pick the one you want, and the one that fits you, and we went out, we, we went to Lackawanna, and that's the only time I had an experience to play with the, uh, with the track team. And uh, another experience we had, I hate to even talk about it. In fact, I talked to my son-in-law and I said, I don't know if I should even bring this up because it, it was a disheartening thing that happened. We had a player on our team. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the rules with the Niagara Frontier League, but if you're playing any sport at that time, you cannot play for another team other than North Tonawanda High School. In other words, you can't play with the Pirates or you can't play with the, the whatever teams that are out there. Well, they had a Friday night league. It was called the Electric League. And we had a, uh, I won't name it. Uh, we had a catcher that ended up going to that game. And we ended up playing Tonawanda and we beat them, beat them for the championship. Well, what happened was they found out that Ray, oh, Ray, oh, Gary, <laughs> give me his name. They found, they, they, let, they told, found out that Ray had played in this game. Now he was approached by Mr. Small, Small who was a Clint Small, and he was the coach of the Tonawanda baseball team. He came over to George Vetter and he said, uh, George, he said, I got some bad news for you, but he says, I think one of your players went out of, uh, out of the league and played on Friday night's electric league in what to call He says, no, that, that can't be. So he said, who was the player? So he told them, and they went up and asked him point blank, did you play in a game on Friday night with the Pirates in the Electric League? And he said, no. Well, that said, when, some, when you lied to George Vetter, you better know what you're doing. <laughs> you better tell the truth because it's going to come out. 
Well, they in turn got got the lineup for that game. And his name was on there. And George Vetter said, you lied to me. He says, as a result, we're going to have to give up the championship probably because we broke the rule. You broke the rule. So that, that happened three games prior or two, two or three games prior to that Tonawanda lead when they won the championship. Well, they took the two wins away and they took the Tonawanda championship away and nobody talked to Ray for a long time. Wow. And that's, that's you know, that's kind of, that's kind of, it's kind of a heck of a thing to carry on your shoulder the last the rest of your life. And I'm sure it was brought up to them an, an awful lot especially by the guys that played with them, you know. You know that was unheard of in North Carolina. That's a heck of a story. I want to wrap this up with you, and I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I wish you well. I wish you good health. And Matt Bersick, thank you so much for joining me here on the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. Be well. Well, thank you very much for this interview. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I hope, you know, you had Joe Morano on that roster last time I looked at it. And I never even knew that Joe Morano played on the football team. He must have been a scrub all the way Bob down to the fourth team or something like that. Because don't tell him that because he's a good friend of mine. He played second base for me on our, our baseball team. Heck of a hitter. Heck of a guy. And a very good friend. He's, in fact, we belong to the third orders club together. Uh, and played ball with with the third warders club after afterward after high school after I come out of the service. But I I I, I like to add one more thing. After being aboard ship for about six months after Mediterranean cruise, I got called to the quarter deck, and I said, "Oh my God, what do I do now?" So he, I walked in there and I said. Uh, Seaman recruit Matt Persick reporting, sir. And he said, uh, I understand you're a ball player. And I said, I don't know where you got that information, but I said, yes, I did play a ball in high school. He said, well, how would you like to play for the Navy? And I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> He said, well, we have an Eastern Seaboard team out of Newport, Rhode Island that travels up and down the East Coast and plays uh, the Marines, Camp Sevens, which was an army base, a Coast Guard station that was on, on the West Coast. And for a guy that didn't want to go to the, go in the, play in the pros and I wanted to go in the Navy, I end up playing professional ball anyway. <laughs> so when I come out of the service, I ended up playing in the Canadian League for a little while. But that was an experience for me. Terrific. Matt Bursick, thank you once again for joining me today. I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you very much.